here's my question. Um, because from your story, it sounds like you had this almost like an epiphany or this this moment where, as you said, you know, God kind God or I forget what, what terminology you used. Um, divine divine intervention. divine intervention happened, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. So what I'm curious to know is what part did you play in that? Because I think a lot of people mm. are sitting around waiting for some sort of divine intervention yeah. when in the meantime, they need to get themselves off the rear end and create the space for that divine intervention, so to speak. Um, yeah. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I can share my experience and I don't want people to walk away thinking that they have to get to this point to have that experience. So that's my disclaimer to what I'm about sure. to say. And I know you me, we've touched on this in conversation is for me, anytime I've had like, like a massive experience breakthrough like that awakening, if you will, I had, there was, a, there was a level of what I call the gift of desperation where mm -hmm. I, I, the pain had gone on so long that I would have done anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I didn't really see this one coming. This was not one that I went to bed that night and said, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to change my whole belief system. So I better get a good night's sleep because I got some work to do. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like I went to yeah. bed, you know, like, honestly, I had been sick for almost seven years. My marriage was crumbling and falling apart. I had a two-year-old I was struggling to take care of. IVs on my arm, whole care nurses. And I woke up that day and I just heard... I, I, I'm an empath and I, I hear myself. I'm very intuitive. I feel, I feel, mm -hmm. I don't, not like see, but I feel and I hear. And I just heard that voice loud and clear. I'm, I'm, I'm not living sick anymore. I'm done. Wow. I looked oh, around wow. and I, and I literally, and this is something, you know what you guys, like anybody out there, anybody can do this. This is what happened for me. I just, I kind of like stepped back and I looked around. I looked mm. around at my mess. So take, I always say there's a power in the pause. There's power in the pause. Wow. So take your power in the pause. Find your power in the pause. Step back, take a look around, and get honest. Look at your mess. Yeah. Yeah. I looked at my mess, and I said, and honestly, this is what I said. Is this it? Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it was like, and it, is this it? And and I literally was like, this, this can't be it, because... Right. I, this is my, my conversation. I'm 36 years old. If I'm going to be on this planet for a while, I got a long ways to go. Sure. This, yeah. this can't be it. And, and then I heard, I'm done. I'm not going to live sick anymore. I'm going to get well. Mm. And then, um, and then, you know, the realization came through event. Like I have no clue how I'm going to do it. I just knew it was, it was mm. a done deal in that moment. It was like, I would talk about being signed, sealed, delivered. It was like, boom, we're done. Wow. Right. Right. So taking a look at your mess, creating that space, power in the pause to, to really see the mess and decide, is this mine? And is this going right. to continue to be mine? Right. That's, That's the decision you got to make. Uh, so I, 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 I want to highlight that for a second, because again, it's creating that space. Like you said, it's, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes we get so focused on creating our life the way we want it to be, you know, X, Y, and Z has to be like this. And we're so busy focusing on making our life better that mm -hmm. we're just digging deeper and we have to make space for, for God, for that divine intervention, for, for the universe, for whatever it is. Yeah. And until we make that space, or like you said, the power of Paul, yeah. there, there's, there's no way for God to get in because we're so consumed yeah. in ourselves and so consumed yeah. in getting yeah. things the way we want. So we have to take that step back. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that's, you know, and um, I didn't know I was doing that at the time. It wasn't like right. I was a conscious observer at the know. time. Right. I knew that that's, I was, I'm taking the power in the pause and I'm creating yeah. all this space, you know, and look right. what's coming through for me. That's not like, that's why I feel divine, a divine responsibility because I can look back right. and say, well, this is what happened for me. Right. Hmm. And this is how I chose to respond to it. Right. I just, I want to highlight one more thing here, which was, I think, I think like, a super powerful disclaimer that you put out there just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. And I use it all the time as well. You know, yes, there's a lot of power in the pause and there's a lot of power in the desperation. And really it is a lot of our conversation. And I think I was telling you one time where I'm kind of done being the fireman when like I work with, with business owners and they come to me when they're pretty much almost doors closed, you know, 
um, or they already did close their door and they're trying to figure out a way if they even could save their businesses. Right. But it doesn't have to get there. You know, yeah. we have a fire detector in our home so that we don't have to call the fireman, you know, or yeah. anything like that. Like, it, it's really like, like, yes, we are talking in this kind of situation about, mm -hmm. about desperation or, you know, rock bottom or, you know, all these different things. But yeah, I think I think the key and this was also through our discussion about affirmations in a sense or the back to the I am right. I am better than this. Like I deserve to live that better life. I deserve I am more than this. This doesn't have to be my life and it doesn't even ever have to get progressively worse, you know. And, and, and like you were saying, your story, your story is so that you could help other people right. who are before, you know, right. getting to that rock bottom that you're in. So, so the next, the question that's coming through for me right now to ask myself, if you guys <laughs> will entertain yeah. me for a moment, is what could I have done differently so that I could have avoided getting that far into the hole? Hmm. Like what, what could yeah. I have done differently so that I didn't end up to the point where I was so desperate to do anything, right? Almost beyond mm -hmm. repair at that point, because so much right. damage was done to my body. If I were like, when I look back on that time in my life, and this speaks true to any situation, I always implore people to question everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just because one doctor or one psychiatrist or one this, or one that, or this one tells you you're a loser, this one, you know, whatever imprint stamps that you're being given, question it. Sure. Because they're being imprinted and stamped on you. Their truth, their perspective, their information, their, and like, it doesn't mean that it's yours. Mm. You get to decide what's true for you. And so in okay. order, like, I didn't do that. I just said, okay, well, they told me this is what it is and this is what's going to happen. And this is the protocol. This is what I got to do just to try to keep me from getting worse. Right. That was, like the, the, that was right. the level, the box I was in. I sure. didn't question anything back then. So I'm always, that's the first thing is, you know what? Question everything and then get curious and get mm. curious without judgment. Wow. Go inward and start taking inventory on your own belief system, your own belief structure, thoughts you're thinking, what are your beliefs? What are your core values? When somebody says to you, there's no cure, there's nothing we can do. How does mm -hmm. that land? How does that land in you? Does that feel true for you? Mm. Because if it doesn't, that's your inner knowing telling you something otherwise mm. and right. listening to that. So listening to your inner knowing is a huge part of my journey and a I huge part of what I, I coach and teach on with people is the, our inner knowing, listening to that inner knowing. Because when I made that power of decision and I overhauled my belief system and I changed my diet with therapeutic nutrition, I did all the things, right? And I, I went off all the medications. Oh, mm. call 911. It was like my medical team blew up, my family blew up. For, everybody was like running around like a circus. What do you, wow. you're gonna get sicker. You're just gonna get sicker. You're gonna get worse if you're not on your medications. And I, I'm just like, Really? Because like I'm pretty mm. freaking sick. Like, but my inner knowing was telling me something different. So part of my story and an important piece because I think it's really important because I didn't have that external support. I didn't have the external mm -hmm. understanding and support because people weren't living inside of me. They weren't in my body. They weren't in my mind. They weren't in my experience. Mm. And I had that pull, that inner knowing that said, "Nope, we're pulling the plug." Right. And. Wow. Everybody else is like, you pull the plug and you're going to go downhill fast. Like you're going to go. Mm -hmm. and that's not what happened. I went up. I love it. 